opening mass amounts of secret lair in search of the serial numbered to 100 exclusive five thousand dollar card isn't that crazy thanks for tuning in guys joy moss skadoosh joy uh joy moss bad boy mtg or bad boy gaming yeah we went back to that um this is crazy that's right praetors we have a, we have a couple that we're gonna crack open also down the road i have three that i'm gonna be uh opening myself i think one is foil two or non-foil i'm not sure but regardless we are going to be opening a lot of secret freaking layers today. I don't think anything crazy value is going to be up inside. Just, just look. This is this is how many. It's nutty, okay? We got a lot here. Uh, big shout outs to Ground Zero Comics in Strongsville, Ohio. Suburb of Cleveland, Ohio. If you're ever around uh, in the area, check them out. Ground Zero comics pearl road strongsville okay let's go these secret layers are such a freaking crazy it, it they're not just a money grab for wizards of the coast look at this they're not just a money grab for wizards of the coast okay people say that and they cry and whine and go wait 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 but they're also a money grab for players they're a freaking money grab for players guys you can make a good flip. Uh, oh, that is nice. On these secret layers. It's so simple, man. It's so simple. A toddler could do it. Look at that. Mother of Ruins. Is that how... What is that? Oh, oh so that's the secret on the back there. Is a mountain. Okay. We're going to put all the secrets in one little spot. And then on top you get the secret layer. <laughs> Which is in this little uh, little bundle pack here. This is gonna be fun. So stick around. We're gonna see. We might end up pulling some freaking crazy sauce. But one of the more recent secret layers, um, or actually not one of the well, it is a recent secret layer, and that's the Praetors. That's where they've been finding uh, these Vesnas, whatever. I don't know why they chose that card, but like the text is all backwards, and on top of that, it's serial numbered to a hundred. And like I said in the video, people were like, wait, you mean they're, you, you, you know for certain, j j uh, Jelly, you know for certain that uh, this is uh, Dan Frazier is back, the enemy segments. You know for certain, man, that, you know, uh, they're numbered to 100, right? And, and they're not just numbered, you know, you know, here's number 55. Of a hundred, and it's a different card. No, I, I was a hundred percent on what I said. They're gonna print, or they did print a hundred cards, and they serial numbered them to one hundred of the same card. Okay, and that's exactly what Wizards did. I wonder if you can get one of these oh, Arcane Signet. That's the secret in this one. I'm just making sure. Yep, only one card there. I'm not even going to open these. Bam, Arcane Signet. That's the secret? Is is there any other? Let's see? Is there, what's up inside of here then? The, the, glue's, uh, the glue's yellow now. Uh, reminds me of some old splat. Uh, there's Boris Signet. Man, these are beautiful to look at. This is a really fun experience because we're opening such a variety thanks to Ground Zero Comics. So, yeah, if you're in the area, check them out. So, uh, not one of these. Okay, so Arcane Signet is the secret. It's not really a secret. It's more like, hey, hey, buddy, we're going to give you the Arcane as well. <laughs> not a secret, Wizards. Special guest, Jen Bartell. Hey, I got a friend with the last name Bartell. He's a freaking lunatic. Not kidding. Not kidding. All right, let's get this one open now here, too. These are nice. Um, I'm glad they cut back on uh, the amount of packaging that goes into these because they really didn't need all that excess stuff. It was kind of in excess. Um, what do you guys think? Like, your experience opening them. Was it in excess? There's a planes right there. B-E-A, beautiful. But uh, on a side note, or a big note, the major note, 
These secret layers. Maybe I should be saving some of these boxes. These boxes are kind of cool. Um, on a major note, the number to 100 Vesna or whatever it is, so far, from my understanding, can only be found inside the Praetor. And I don't know if it's the Praetor foil or non-foil. Might be an either or. Oh, these are beautiful. Mesa. I want to say Mesa. Mesa Enchantress. I used to live in Mesa, Arizona for a very short while. About six months. I mean, I, I lived in Arizona for about two years. Oh, that one's hot. That one pops nice. Very, very cool. And there's Bloom Tender. Ooh, that's a money grab right there. For each color among permanent control, I will man have that color. That is dirty. Meteor Golem. Not sure why they printed this one, but I will say this. That is the sharpest, most detailed, beautiful Meteor Golem I've ever seen in my life. Definitely taking good, kind care of these. That was our secret in that one. But I think this is fun for everyone to see. Get a good look and feel. This one right here, again, Dan Frazier is back. Allied Signets. Maybe, maybe there's another, uh, there's another secret, uh, you know, crazy number to 100, not just inside the Praetors, you know? That's kind of what we're going for here with this mass opening, but also a, a very nice chance, a good chance to see what all is inside, what's all in store. And then I will be dropping mine when I do receive it. Haven't gotten it yet in the mail yet. Azoria Signet. Okay, so this is like the non-foil etched. Remember, they did the foil etched ones. We already opened those. This is the non-foil etched. And you always want to check these. If you end up purchasing one and opening it, definitely check them. Because if there is some kind of crazy misprint, the community for misprints, they don't mess around. Okay? They do not mess around. Beautiful art on this. All by Dan Frazier. OG of the game. Beautiful. Of the art, uh, Racto Signet, amazing. That's why a lot of people, I think, went out and got these. Celestia Signet. And then I would assume on the back side here is none other than Arcane Signet. Okay. So there is the secret, which is, I gotta be honest, it's not really the coolest secret, you know, it's whatever. Uh, but yeah, inside the Praetors, this one is Dan, Fra oh, Dan Frazier again. Okay. I'm gonna try to zip through this. I know we're all getting bored of Danny. Hey, Dan. Ease up on the freaking openings, huh? I'll make this one quick. There's Arcane Sigmund on the back for our secret. Yeah, I like this a lot better <laughs> than the other uh, way they were doing secret layers. I, I will tell you that much. Uh, the way they were doing it before, you know, just a lot of packaging. And then it was sometimes... It seemed a little easy to damage the secret inside the secret layer, you know? But there you go, Boro Signet. I wonder how many people are getting those graded or how many of these secret layers are getting graded. I'll tell you this, if if there is an excess amount of secret layers, I don't know, Dan Frazier, okay, sorry guys. A lot of Dan Frazier here. I mean, hey, these are cards people are gonna want in their decks, you know, the alternate art's freaking legit. But if they, ooh, these are beautiful. I know we already talk, took a look at these once already, but if there is, um, uh, look, these are heavily sought after, but I'll tell you this. People who get these and then submit them to grading, I don't think that's the wisest thing. To, I mean, a lot of these are not going to see much play. A lot of these are just going to be kept aside uh, for collectors, you know? And, and, and I'd say probably... 80 to maybe 75, 80 percent, okay, of the secret layers that are out there are probably going to remain sealed and the rest are going to be open. Whoa! Is it just me or does that Demir signet look a bit misprinted? No? Let's compare it to another one. It looks like something weird's going on there. I could be wrong, but we can easily just compare it now. Luckily, we can compare it. Okay, let's take a look. What was it? Uh, the Demir? Yeah, that. I mean, the text in it is off. Wait, where is the Demir? We have that one to compare. We arcane, 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 
Arcane. Okay, Azoria. Okay, hold on. There's Dim, Dim, Dimmer? Demir. I thought. There's Boros, Golgari, Is it Orzov, Simic. So wait. You're. Wait. You're not guaranteed? All of them? It could. Because there's no. Demir in this one. But there's Demir right here. Gruel, Racto, Celestia. I just want to throw this out there. And then we have Azoria, Simit, Orzov. Wow, yeah. Okay, so you're not, you know, they mix it up in here because there are a lot of signets. Okay, so Demir signet. They seem like it's blurred. Just look at that. It looks like it's blurred to crap. You see, take a good look. Okay, I'm, I'm zooming in right now. Look at that. Racto signet. Doesn't that look like a bit blurred? Same with Celestia signet. The, the text print, like the print on it is blurred. And let's just compare that to another signet. And I'll just take Orzov, for example. I just want to show you guys. Do you see the blurring now? <laughs> There, there is definitely uh, some something awry there, some, some kind of issue. Look, you put it on its side. These are both the same. Uh, both have that special foil, uh, you know, nice little coating on it. But you can tell, like the text printed is uh, is blotched or whatever. So that might be something worth noting. If there's not. <laughs> Scarcity is everything. If there are not many of those, then this little one we opened right here is probably worth a big buck, okay? Because the, the text on it is like is like smudged. Even where it says artifact, it's smudged. You compare that to the same kind of card. Artifact, look at that. Yeah, so uh, let me know. I need to know from you guys who have opened these if you've experienced that and, and if you have then it's not that it's not that common but if like 20 of you reply and say hey um i had no issue mine looks like the normal printing of it and only one of you two of you say hey yeah mine's smudged or maybe none of you then we got something on our freaking hands here's mark pull up in this piece here's a different one we're gonna mix it up today or mix it up right now. Mark freaking Poole. Dude, OG the game. Mark Poole, you're awesome. I'd like the chance to meet Mark Poole. It'd be fun. Maybe make a little video with him. Who knows? Uh, balance. There you go. God, they keep printing this card. I don't know why. I get it's from the uh, original set, you know, Alpha and all that, but they, they seem to keep printing this card. They really, really enjoy it. And the glue they used, or the way, I'll say the way they uh, used the glue is uh is great <laughs> they did a good job with it because it's easy to remove without damaging the card there's brainstorm that's our secret in this mark pool one and then i want to show you guys all these now most of these secret layers do go up um in value you know in price you know depending i wonder which one and this is something we may never know which secret layer is the most limited? Which secret layer was purchased the least of? Oh, the Birds of Paradise, beautiful. Which one's purchased the least of? Howling Mine. I do have an Alpha Howling Mine BGS9. Had to get it. Insanity. So this right here might be worth between five and ten dollars. The BGS9 Alpha Mine I have is nearing two thousand dollars. Insanity. Just, just the difference. It's, it, the card does the exact same thing. There's a wasteland. Um, but because scarcity, there was only 1,100 alpha or 1,100 of any alpha rare in existence. That's it. There was only 1,100 of each rare in alpha printed. There's scarcity again, you know. So oh, having 1,100 of them, when, when these people are throwing... $5,000 on these secret freaking layers, special guest, Fiona Staples. When they're throwing $5,000, and that's that's legit what one of these number to 100 Vesnas have sold for. When they're throwing that kind of money around, 
Is it too far off? What do you guys think the price should be? I mean, this is a new thing. So I would love to hear the community's feedback on what you think the value of a card in Magic the Gathering numbered to 100 should be. <sighs> Time to retire these. Okay. But that was our secret in this one. Here's Soul Scar Mage. Oh, beautiful art. Yeah, I mean, I can I can just uh, stroke the artists all freaking day, you know, um, because they do such amazing work. They really do. Take a look. Soul Scar Mage. That's a heavily played card. Very nice. Issian Grove. This is a more recently printed card, but still amazing. Actually, wasn't uh, Issian uh, Grove? This is like the this the, this would be, this would be the third printing of it, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken. I think it's yeah. I think it's the the third printing of it. Uh, there's Tribe Elder. God, these look so nice. Nice little pop to them. Spell uh, Queller. That's probably easy. at eight to twelve dollar card. Very popular card. Metallic Mimic. Another very popular card. There you go. Oh, that looks good. Very very cool. Okay, so that was uh, whichever one that was. <laughs> I want to save the Praetors. We're not going to do them just yet. We're getting around to them, but not just yet. Thank you for being a part of Secret Lair. You betcha, pal. This one's Saturday morning, D and D. Again, thank you, Ground Zero Comics, for uh, allowing me to do this. This is a, a lot of fun because typically, or always on the channel, I've had to spend my own money to open any of this. And man, these are not cheap, guys. They add up. Well, this one's got a lot of glue on it. I'm not trying to... Okay, there we go. Gotta keep the cards nice and steady. But yeah, what I was saying earlier... Oh, crash through. Get a load of that. That's the secret. That looks crazy. Look how animated. Okay, nice. Very, very nice. Um, Yeah, not good centered, but very, very cool. I'll go over the secret layers in a little bit. Um, All the secrets inside the secret layer. We'll do like a recap at the end i might just be kidding so don't rush okay here we go unbreakable formation oh that in foil would look nice i wonder if i'm opening a foil one that, that reminds me of like uh uh saturday morning cartoons is this supposed to be the say yeah this is probably supposed to be the saturday morning cartoons in the 80s yeah uh they had like this D, &D thing uh and yeah you're looking at it right here that's why it reminded me of it here was downfall i was uh blown away to learn they reprinted this in the latest set as an uncommon there's Impact Tremors. Man, really, really freaking cool. Primal Vigor, probably one of the uh, more valuable uh, of the cards in here. Commander's Sphere. <laughs> Hello there. There you go, dear. <laughs> All right, moving forward. Very cool. Um, but yeah, if everyone... I mean, these cards are all pretty minty. So those who do submit them to PSA or BGS for grading, I mean... Whatevs. There's Fiona Staples we're going to do again. Uh, those who do submit them to grading, I'm just saying, based purely on the fact that there's going to be those ballers with a lot of money who are like, I don't care. I'm blinging out my deck. I'm using some foil secret layer cards, whatever. That'll happen. Okay? But that's not going to... That's not gonna, That's not common, is what I'm saying. Oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah, venerated fire mage. Whoop a doo! Um, it's not common, but for those who do, uh, you know, submit it. Now that PSA and BGS has raised their prices, and I hope, I hope, guys, within a year or two, they get a reality check, you know. And now that everyone's not cooped up inside with nothing better to do than sit there and submit some cards, you know, and just live online. Uh, you know, submit cards to PSA and BGS, uh, that the prices to submit a card will come down. Because I've been asked that a lot on my Patreon. Link in the description, every video. And I'll respond to Messenger like, hey, man, like, I think now's a bad time to even submit. You know, like, I haven't submitted any cards to BGS or PSA uh, lately. Here's Saturday morning D&D again. This might be the foil one. I'm not sure. Yeah, foil edition. So let's see what this looks like. Uh, but yeah, right now is not a good time. When when they're asking like $150 to $200 a card, what the hell are you guys high over at PSA? You must be really backed up um, for you to give no Fs because you're basically... Uh, oh, that looks fun. You're, you're basically... Um, 
uh, telling the sports community uh, that you're the only ones, you know, or maybe some Marvel stuff, you know, you're the only ones that are going to really matter because there's not many magic cards that, you know, are printed in recent times in the last few years that are valued over $200 a card. Now, do give it that when a card is graded, let's, uh, for instance, a, a perfect example of a card, this is kind of tough to open, a perfect example of a card graded uh, BGS 9.5, okay? BGS 9.5 is basically a PSA 10. They're almost one and the same, okay? Price-wise, value-wise, return-wise. Um, that card of, let's say, a Jeweled Lotus, okay? Oh, that looks so nice. Of a Jeweled Lotus, the regular Jeweled Lotus, let's just say $600. I know it goes for a little bit more than that, okay? Or it can go for a little bit less, but right now, like TCG Player... Uh, has it around 600 615 there was a time it was up to 675 it's been over the place but i did speak with someone in the know it's another side note and this person who works for magic they did tell it was gavin gavin told me gavin it, it was in a public forum too gavin said yeah we're going to be reprinting of course you know jeweled lotus when he didn't want to say but that may you know i think quite a few people came across that and i think i saw a reddit post about it too that you know hey i asked that question and Gavin replied, you know, yeah, it's going to be reprinted, but he's not willing to say when. It could be 20 years from now. It could be in the next Commander set. We don't know. But given that the regular one, fresh, fresh pack, freshly cracked, is 600, what is this? Mother's Day. Is $600, uh, pack fresh, Okay. If you had a, PG, uh, a BGS 9.5, PSA 9s are selling for about 750 to 1100. P, uh, that's BGS 9. A BGS 9.5 is going for roughly. Oh, there, there's our uh, mystery one on the back. Sorry. Um, BGS 9.5 is selling for. I don't think there's many ones that sold. But I know asking price, I seen two thousand, I seen three thousand, you know, craziness. But I would assume it's going for like double to triple at most the asking price of a, of a PSA nine or just a pack fresh jeweled lotus. So do keep that in mind. But these kind of cards, they're just not worth it to submit to grading, um, unless you, <laughs> if you were to submit one, it would be the Vestra, whatever the heck it is, the one number to a hundred. Okay. That would be the card, geez, that would be the card you would want to submit to grading simply because <laughs> they've recently sold for $5,000. That is insanity. I don't think they're worth five grand, in my own opinion, okay? Then again, I, I, I may be way wrong about this because it's the first time Wizards has ever serial numbered something. People want something the first, the, 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 you know, the first of its kind. Oh, that was really good. Nice Mother of Ruins. There's Mother of Ruins again. These are all Mother of Ruins. Um, people want the first of its kind. That's why Alpha's worth so much. There's a reason, you know, like I, I brought up the Howling Mine thing. We just pulled a Howling Mine special edition, you know, foil, whatever, out of one of these secret layers. At most, it's going for, what, two, uh, maybe 15 bucks? Okay, without looking it up. 15 bucks, maybe, I'd say. Depending foil, non-foil, all that stuff. But the alpha, there's a reason the alpha is going for as much as it is. Let's take a look here. Another brainstorm. No crazy serial number. We're getting, we're getting to the to the freaking uh, the meat over here. We're almost there. But there's a reason, yeah, that they go for so much because of the first of its kind. Only 1,100 were printed, and then beta. I think beta is 3,500 or 3,000 for the rares. Each rare had 3,000 or 3,500 printed. Um. That's scarcity, man. Scarcity is huge. People want what's scarce, you know? No one wants the town hoe, okay? I'm just throwing it out there. You're not going to keep her around. You're going to get rid of her quick, okay? It's just how it goes. Male and female. That's how it goes, man. Um, nice counterspell. There you go. <laughs> the art on... I don't know. 
I love this one. OG Birds of Paradise. That's that's beautiful. This, in my opinion, should be like 25, 30 bucks. Uh, is it? I don't know. There's a Howling Lion foil. Beautiful. And a Wasteland. Wasteland's probably the most valuable out of the five of these, if you asked me. Balance is probably the cheapest along with Counterspell and Brainstorm. But man, wow. Very, very beautiful. Uh, brilliant colors in all these. We are now on to special guest Jen Bartell. And then guess what? We have the final two. And that's the Praetors. Where, if there's something crazy popping off, it would be inside uh, on the flip side of those secret layers. There we go. We got ourselves a, a, a land. Not a big fan of them doing lands. I get the art. No diss to the artist, but just give us something special in the secret layer. I mean, we're basically... Wizards found a way to make money in the secondary market. This is Wizards making money in the secondary market. Am I wrong? No. Okay, I can say that right now. No, I'm not. This is them making money in the secondary market. So if if you're gonna just reprint stuff, you know, give us a nice secret. Don't give us a freaking planeswalker on the back uncommon from from Dominaria that's worth fifty cents. Give us something at least, at least it should be $5 in that, sl excuse me, in that slot. I told you guys I had hiccups. At least $5 in that slot in the secret layer, okay? Uh, here we go, Praetors. This is where we could find some craziness. If anyone does know if it's uh, the foil or non-foil, please let me know, okay? I'd like to know that. We could pull a $5,000 card right here. And again, I will be cracking mine. Oh, beautiful. This is the foil one. Um, I will be cracking my three uh, after this video airs. Whenever the hell they arrive, don't know when. Oh, my God. This one right here, this land, before the reprint here, this was like a $20 land. Very heavily sought after, you know. Um, but now, not so more. Or not so much, right? I think it's this one I'm thinking of. And you got the little uh, Phyrexian obliterator in the background there. But here we go. Very, very nice. Uh, Phyrexian cards. I don't think they're mixed in here. I'm pretty sure they're in the actual secret on the back. So we did not hit a billion dollars here, but I do have three more coming my way. I wonder, Ground Zero, Marcus, uh, let me know. I'll talk to you. If you have more of these, just the Praetors, I would love to crack them on, on the camera for you, man. Because if we pull that big money, that is some serious freaking video, dude. People are going to want to see that. I don't think anyone has anything of that nature. Very nicely done artwork here. These are all gorgeous. There's a, uh, yeah, Sheoldred. Sheoldred! Um, love this one. That's just all freaking nice. That's probably the least sought after one. There's some good value right there as well. All amazing Praetors. We are very, almost certainly done here. Last one to go. Good freaking luck, Chuck. If we pull it, I'm going to flip out. And I'm not going to lie, right now I've been holding my bladder. Okay? I'm kind of dancing around, almost paused it, but I'm like, I can't do that to Marcus. It's got to see it all the way through. Otherwise, he ain't, he ain't going to be like, I'm going to cut off something. He would never say that, though. But here we go. Phyrexian. Here we go. Show these off. And then we'll get to the last one, the last secret of all of them. Uh, let me know your thoughts on the PSA BGS thing. Uh, I would have no problem submitting a bunch of cards. Go back to 25 bucks. Go back to $25 a card. That would be freaking cool, you know, to submit. I mean, we're basically paying for some plastic and whatever tool bag they, you know, decide has enough smarts, you know, to say, okay, this, this corner looks crisp. The edges are nice on that side. Okay, that the edges are good there. Surface, yeah, surface is smooth. Okay, cool. There's there's no smudging. Centering looks great. You know, I mean, that's really all it comes down to. So, I mean, how it's that much money, I don't know. Hire ten extra people, okay, to to do your little uh, you know, your grading thing that you can rely on. What do we got right here? What is it? Oh, almost popped my cherry, but it didn't. Okay. So that's the last of it. All the secret layers we did get. It almost seems like some of these um, are guaranteed inside the secret layer, where others, you know, might be a bit more random. But this is all we got from the secrets. There you have it. Two Yaya's, Arcane Signet, another Arcane Signet, another Arcane Signet, Arcane Signet. So pretty cool. I noticed uh, the foil ones are not smudged at all on the etched foils. They're not smudged like the other uh, 
uh, smudged uh, etched foils. Let me know about those etched foils, guys. Uh, I definitely want to hear about that. I think I opened them all. I'm just going to take a little, little quick look around here. Okay. And then uh, tomorrow, I will be cracking open some freaking bundles. We're going to see what's new inside of bundles. Um, we got four of them. I may be opening three. And then also, Marcus is a silly willy. He said, Joey, I know you open these stupid theme boosters. I even told him, don't buy these. Like, I'm not even going to pay for it. I'm not buying. I don't. I don't. I don't buy this. But he was nice and kind and cool enough that he purchased a whole freaking brick uh, of theme boosters. Hopefully, we do pull something good out of here. Hopefully, Wizards stepped up their game. We're going to learn about that in an upcoming video. Uh, this one might air tomorrow evening. We will see. But uh, yeah, fingers crossed that Wizards decided to make some changes here. I highly doubt it. <laughs> um, if they did every other theme booster had an additional rare or mythic that'd be great but the problem with that is distribution because if they did increase the rarity which they are people can already do this you could just go out and weigh any one of these theme packs i know i'm giving people ideas right now and people are running out the freaking door um and uh if you're one of those people you probably want to admit it but if you do go ahead and let me know um but you can throw them on a scale and you can tell if there's an extra rare or mythic in there now, I'm not sure if they subtract an uncommon or common. If there's an extra rare or mythic, I can't recall. I'd have to look through some of my past videos. That's another thing. If you know about that, please let me know. But if they did not, it would be really easy to just cherry pick all the theme packs which have an additional rare or mythic in them. I'm Joey Moss, Bad Boy MTG. If you learned something today, please let me know. And uh, be kind to someone. All right? Life is short. Make the best of it. Enjoy it. Embrace it. Skadoosh.